This is Delhi. Please stand by for our next program. This is All India Radio. Welcome tomorrow. All India Radio in collaboration with Vigyan Prasar presents the science serial Welcome Tomorrow based on myriad facets of artificial intelligence. Time now to listen to the 40th episode entitled Article of Faith. There is a lot of speculation floating around about artificial intelligence or AI. This is particularly true about its relevance and usefulness to India. However, as mentioned, these are simply speculations. AI is of tremendous use in the country and that is why investment, both by the government and the private players, is on the upswing. The market for AI in India stands at around Rs. 50,000 crores and the value is increasing rapidly. Some feel that the role of AI in India will be limited to mobiles, TV and marketing etc. Others think that it will herald an increasing dependency on technology. And this is the crux of the matter because the ascendancy of AI is now visible in all spheres of life. This radio serial aims to cut through the layers of misunderstandings and mistrust and to present the facts and figures in a simplified manner to facilitate the understanding and appreciation of AI. Welcome, welcome, Umesh ji. Come in. <laughs> How come you are here so early on Sunday morning? Ah, looks like there is not much pressure at work, huh? <laughs> <laughs> I wish. I wish it was so. But that is not the case. It is just that I wanted Om to meet Arul. Uh, well, kids these days, I tell you, they don't work as much as they think. Uh, to tell you the truth, I think they simply dream a lot. Welcome, welcome, Om. Uh, welcome, beta. Umesh ji. Yes? Don't you think we need to dream it before we can achieve it? Uh, of course, we will have to strive too. But how can we fly without uplifting dreams first? Uh, come, Om. Sit, please. Uh, come, come, Umesh ji. You know, we are having chuli kachori today. Wow, that's great. <laughs> and I've also got some packed for Tinny and Shashi also. Don't forget to take it for them. No, no, no. <laughs> sure, sure. I'll take that. Oh, yes. The entire residential colony is awash in the aroma of chole kachori. That is emanating from your kitchen. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> ah, actually, it tempted me to pay you a visit right away. <laughs> oh, good, good work. <laughs> ah, correct decision, Umesh ji. Uh, well, Arul has stepped out to buy yogurt. Uh, she should be back soon. Manisha is making the kachoris. Ah, Manisha auntie is really a good cook. She cooks for Taisha too. And Taisha says she makes good pasta also. Yeah, yeah, sure. But tell me, beta, how is your new job coming along? Sarika, <laughs> it hasn't even been one complete month after joining at the new job and mm -hmm. he wants to go ahead with his startup idea. Fast boy. That is why I bought him. Uh, over to meet Arul. Oh, wow, wow. That's a grand plan. Uh, what idea do you have about your startup, Om? Uh, 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 come on. Can't you see this is what is wrong, Vineet? I didn't get you. Uh, he has a wonderful job, which he wants to chuck in order to float his own startup. What if it fails? Uh, then he won't even have a job in hand and the snide comments from relatives will be extra burden to bear. But Papa, you need to take risks if you are to succeed. Didn't you do something similar? You went to the town to be a teacher, right? But did not get a permanent position. So you went into journalism and success was yours at every step. You too took a risk, na? didn't you? Ah, those days. Those days were very, very different. There were multiple options in those days. Tell me, does anyone resign from a wonderful job these days? Yes, Umesh ji. Kids do. 
Nowadays they do it. And and my Arul also did. She has been able to get funding for her startups too. Yes, auntie. The venture capitalist who has invested in Arul's setup has evaluated my idea too. He likes it and has suggested that Arul and I work together instead of separately. Oh, that's a great idea. Yes, uncle. Oh, oh, look. These guys have to protect their investment, but you have to take care of your families, huh? It isn't a easy task, you know, to set up your own business. Arul and you are both engineers and you must be aware of what engineers are facing these days, do you know? Actually, it is my suggestion that you stick to your job and Arul quickly finds another. If not, I can see her drifting in two years' time. Namaste, uncle. Namaste, beta. Namaste. Oh, how are you? Uh, have you got the yogurt? I got the yogurt, mummy. Good. But Taisha saw me with it and asked if we were having parathas. Mm. She will be dropping in two to taste them. Very good. <laughs> Well, this is not a trivial matter. This pertains to life. Take for example, uh, uh, this artificial intelligence thing hmm. that you want to work on. Well, this has the word artificial as a prefix. How can it be the future of a country or the next generation? After all, it is artificial. <laughs> artificial. <laughs> Looks like you are swimming against the tide, Umesh ji. <laughs> yeah. Well, well, well. I believe that the pace at which artificial intelligence is consolidating its hold in different sectors, it will soon reign supreme in all aspects of human civilization. I think the key to development is hidden in the use of artificial intelligence. All this is nothing but a foreign propaganda. All this potential exists abroad. Look, at the end of the day, all we need are two slices of bread, two rotis. Can your AI contribute towards this? Come on, Umesh ji. Uh, give Arul a chance to explain. Yes, uncle. My work hinges around the use of AI in agriculture. Artificial intelligence in agriculture? Will it farm the land? Then what will the farmers do? Uncle, we can use AI to analyze the seasonality, variety or the species being grown, use of fertilizers etc. to predict the production patterns so that the government can formulate the procurement policies well in time. It can decide on the number of procurement centers to be set up and also decide on where to set these up. It can even fine-tune logistic too, to the extent of calculating the number of sacks that can be stored in each granary. AI can help at every step. This is amazing indeed. Oftentimes, because of a discrepancy in calculations, sacks of produce have to be stored in the open. So, artificial intelligence helps in collecting and analyzing data to assist policy making. What else can it do in the field of agriculture? I mean... What else is being done? Oh, a lot is being done, Om. Machine learning and AI are being used widely in the field of agriculture, especially during sowing of crops. These are applied in all aspects of agriculture, ranging from irrigation to application of fertilizers, and even during reaping. Best of all, AI has been a true ally of the farmers in these times when the climate change is causing global warming. How can that be, Arul? We have not yet triumphed uh, over climate change. I will have to explain in detail. Basically, from a farmer's perspective, there are seven steps that are involved in farming. Roughly speaking, these are preparation of the soil, sowing of seeds, manuring or adding fertilizers, irrigation, protection against pests, reaping and storage. AI is helpful at each of these steps. It provides solutions to issues with respect to the step under consideration. For example, analysis of soil will tell the farmer about the fertility status of the soil and give suggestions about the fertilizers to be added and the amounts to be used. This means very little is wasted as only appropriate nutrients are added in adequate amounts. This translates into financial benefits for the farmers. Absolutely correct, Om. I am really impressed. Ah, looks like you have done your homework, huh? <laughs> mm.
Oh, I'm noticing it too. This guy is an engineer. How did he suddenly become so proficient in agriculture? Uh, I think Om and Arul have formed a nexus of some kind. Huh? <laughs> I think so. Very correct. <laughs> oh no, uncle. You can investigate our nexus later. Now please pay attention to the nexus between AI and agriculture. Like Om says, AI helps us to identify the nutritive elements that are lacking in the soil and that clues us in about what we must use and in the quantities desirable. Above all, farmers are facing new challenges arising out of pollution and also climate change ushered in by global warming. True. Such changes are making it difficult for farmers to correctly identify the best time for sowing the seed. This is where AI can correctly forecast the seasonal changes and predict the optimal period for sowing seeds. Arul, uh, Bitter, you once mentioned that AI has revolutionized irrigation practices. Yes, auntie. I will tell you. Okay, Bitter. <laughs> this is the era of precision farming. This means that the crop being grown in the field is given the correct amount of water. No less, no more. The roots are irrigated by pipes that feed it water, drop by drop, with the help of artificial intelligence. The water savings were 90% more than the conventional irrigation system. In aeroponics, everything is controlled. This is because a closed system with no exposure to climatic conditions, not even to day-night hours. Artificial intelligence controls the nutritive elements to be added and the amounts required. It also controls the exposure to light. The entire system is automatically controlled by artificial intelligence, that is AI. These days, drones are being pressed into services to uh, spray pesticides, huh? <laughs> <laughs> Papa, using drones to spray pesticides is old news. Now the drones patrol the airspace over the field and detect insect infestation. AI calculates if there is the need for insecticides or not. That's peculiar. I mean, if there are insects, you would need insecticides, won't you? Papa, this is the beauty of AI. Not all the insects are harmful. Some are actually beneficial for the crops. Besides, we just have to keep the pests under control, not annihilate them. The drones take all the factors into consideration before spraying. And that too in minimal amounts. Good work, Oh. <laughs> Thank you, Auntie. <laughs> Your artificial intelligence empowered drones are ecologically aware as well, I think. Uh, uh, and why not, Sarika? If humans have not been conscious ecologically, Maybe it's time for machines to be. Huh? Uh, Arul, tell me, what is the role that artificial intelligence plays during the reaping of ripe crops? Yeah, yes, Papa. Papa, we have AI-empowered machines that can identify the correct time of reaping based on the time of ripening of the crop. If it is a large field, AI can calculate the plowing distances and trajectories so that the least amount of fuel is sued with the maximal result. It can also suggest the specific instruments needed to reap the crops in question. It can also provide information about the availability of these instruments. The AI app will soon provide our farmers with all this information. Isn't that right, Om? Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, what do you mean? Isn't that right, Om? What does Om know? We need. We need. Uh, yes, Umesh. Uh, I think. There is something amiss here. I'm sure. <laughs> <laughs> Papa, you always manage to sniff out something amiss everywhere. <laughs> well, why shouldn't I? Here you are, you two, both of you chucking up perfectly good jobs and becoming involved with strange new technology. Exactly. Point. Anyway, I'm perplexed, absolutely perplexed. If artificial intelligence is going to do everything then, what role will farmers play? This is a valid question, Umesh Shankar. But tell me, everyone we meet these days says that he or she does not have time. What will this person do if time is made available? Tell us, tell us, Papa. Yes, tell us, Papa. Well, well, if they get time, well, they will do something or the other. <laughs> uh, they will learn something new. Men broken relationships. And, and fulfill unattained dreams. I mean, they will do something or the other. So will the farmers. They will find time to value add to products. They will find new ways to maximize profits. 
They will seek out newer technologies that will lessen their burden yet increase their profits. Uh, so Arul, your startup is providing solutions to technologies in the fields, huh? We do that, Vinit Uncle. But let us tell you how India is poised to exploit artificial intelligence. Uh, wait, 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 wait. Om, tell me first how you know so much about Arul's startup and also so much about artificial intelligence role in India, huh? Are Umesh Uncle, Om does data analysis too. So it is natural that he should know about technology updates. And anyways, Uncle, AI is being used in so many fields, starting from health services to space travel and electric supply to use by the army. Mm. And don't forget the share market where trading uses AI. People use it to determine where to invest and how much to invest. On the health front, AI is a useful weapon in our fight against illnesses. And I remember, Beta, I read that artificial intelligence empowered apps are increasingly being used in the fields of textiles and even makeup. Yes, yes. Yes, Mummy, it is now possible to keep track of the fabrics being preferred with respect to the changing season. Mm. <laughs> even the color preferences of an individual. Oh, good. <laughs> AI can even suggest the appropriate furniture for your room. Is it? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> and you know what, Auntie? Mm? Some companies have based the designs of costumes and furniture on AI-empowered apps and tools. Wonderful! Automobile companies use AI to compute the fuel efficiency of their cars by studying the condition of roads in a country, along with the purchasing power of the citizens. Mm. AI has hastened the pace at which new models are being introduced. Is it true that AI apps help with the logistics of loading cargo in ships and planes? Absolutely correct, Papa. Maintaining balance has always been of primary importance when loading ships and planes. Engineers are proficient at this task, but with the advent of AI, the task of loading has become easier and swifter. The AI machines decides how the weight should be distributed and then conveyor belt or big cranes are used to move the cargo. Well, we all know that robots have been used in the industry for many years now. But what is the status of artificial intelligence in India, Beta? I mean to say, do the government policies favour artificial intelligence? Definitely, Sarikanti. In June 2018, the Indian government formulated a national policy on AI. The government released a document entitled National Strategy for Artificial Intelligence, AI for All. Right, Om. This paper put forward by Niti Aayog deals with five main heads including how to accelerate the rate of growth and to bring more and more citizens under its ambit. Arul, what are those five main heads? Uh, these heads are important indicators about whether artificial intelligence can really be used to benefit the common citizens or whether it is all hot air. No, no Baba. All hot air usually emanated from news on television. <laughs> <laughs> I agree with him. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, the five heads are healthcare, agriculture, education, urban and smart city infrastructure, and transport and mobility. Mm, the direction seems to be correct, absolutely all right. But how does it align with your startup? I mean, how does it fit in with? Arul's a startup? The government has laid out the basic principle to extend all types of help. Now it is up to us to decide what we want to do, how we are going to use AI to provide solutions. I mean, we, young people like Om and me, have to decide. Yes, indeed, Arul. We are the ones who have to use it. We have to study the problems and find solutions. And it is here that artificial intelligence is turning out to be massively useful. Arul? Yes, uncle? Uh, you have chosen the agriculture sector. Are you going to remain limited to it? Uncle, does a technology ever remain limited or confined? When human beings learned to tear up the atom, didn't it lead both to bombs and as well as generate electricity? And now we have medical intervention. AI has tremendous potential. It is being developed to think and act like humans do. And in a few cases, it has far exceeded human capabilities. 
However, it can think like human being and is able to take decisive and informed decision. This is why almost all countries in the world have formulated their own policies and regulatory guidelines. Oh, but there is something I haven't been able to understand. Arun, how can a machine think like humans? Tell me, Sarika. Yes. Uh, uh, do you think this is possible? Actually, Umesh ji, this was my question also. Is it possible, Arul? Hey, <laughs> Sarika auntie, why not? Think, why is Papa is a journalist and Vineet uncle is an engineer? Well, very simple. This is because he was interested in science and I was more interested in literature and in politics. Good answer. <laughs> Absolutely, Umesh is correct. However, it was education that gave us the skills we learnt. You are correct, Papa. We are what we are, courtesy of our education. The learning may be what we were taught in school or at home, but all this is what we learnt in this life, True, on this earth, right? And what is so special about this? This is standard, isn't it, Beta? It's a kind of routine, and that's why they say you manifest signs of your learning. Our uh, learning is the foundation of character, Sarika. So now you agree. that whatever we are is a result of all that we have imbibed or learned okay okay but what is that you two want to say exactly vineet these two are implying that we have no brain yes yes uh, no, uh, no, 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 no. we are only a product of what we have learned mm. as if experience counts for nothing now you kids listen to us okay we are your parents whatever we have learned formally is fine but i became a successful journalist only through vast experiences of life correct but then this is exactly what ai is we stuff all sorts of information into it and it learns to reason like a human being oh really yes to allow it to think like a human being we feed data the more the data the better is the machine's ability to analyze and respond accordingly this is almost like a learning process in childhood feeding the information into the machines is easy but to create a machine that can respond like human beings needs feeding tons of data to it this is the reason why everyone is connected to social media Connectivity between people is the best data stream for machine learning even television viewing reveals data what are you watching how long are you watching who is watching what are these but potential data for machine learning it is data and only data that can make a machine respond like human being so all that we hear on television or do on our mobiles are all data for machine learning <laughs> not just tv or mobiles papa what you hear on the fm channel of your car radio also serves as data However it is true that data privacy especially personal data privacy is protected by law and anyone who breaks these rules is liable for persecution Okay okay oh man Arul I understand that in some countries artificial intelligence has taken over significant responsibilities uh, for example human resources hiring traffic control and issuing of chalans for rule breakers Vineet Ankal This is just the tip of the iceberg. Do you know that the news reading is another task that AI is performing these days? Hmm? Don't yes. talk so much, Om. You're talking a little bit too much. Remember, not only am I your father, but I'm also a journalist. News is read by a human being, not by artificial intelligence. Hmm, okay? Uncle, journalists are aware about everything. and that is why you may recall that in 2018 the news on the xinhua news channel of china was read out by an ai enhanced machine it looked just like one of us and had it not confessed that it wasn't human we would never have guessed yes yes robot read the news i remember i remember hearing something about it but it was an actual human being a famous chinese news anchor papa you are such an acclaimed journalist yet you even could not differentiate between a human being and a robot ah uh, what are you saying he was reading the news in intonation identical to that of the famous news anchor zhang xiao 
एब्सोल्यूटली करेक्ट बाबा आई एम योर फादर After all, okay? <laughs> yes, I don't deny. <laughs> wow, wow, Meiji, you have hit a good length ball for a sixer. That should teach the young ones something. Uh, you know, Meiji, these kids have been treating us like infants, huh? <laughs> <laughs> Vineet, you are an engineer in the army. <laughs> you understand new technology, mm. AI, etc., etc., quite well. I was a student of political science. Journalism taught me to be aware about what was happening around me. I would like to tell you all something about the same. Hmm. What new news, Papa? Well, you and Arul should have admitted that you have launched a startup together. Uh, uh, hold on, hold on, hold on. Uh, when did this happen, Arul? Why didn't you tell us anything? Yes, Arul. <laughs> Bitter, we did know that you were planning to launch your startup, but you never mentioned that Om was your partner in this endeavor. Exactly. <laughs> Mummy, we wanted to give you all a surprise. Ah. But Umesh uncle took Om to task, and we decided to postpone the announcement for a bit. But Umesh uncle, how did you guess? Well, like I have told you many times, huh? We are the fathers. You are the children. <laughs> 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 ah, okay. Om's behavior gave me the first clue. Huh? <laughs> Then I overheard him on the phone, and the picture became clear. And I was simply testing the power of their conviction and commitment. Wow, <laughs> Mesh, again a good length ball for a sixer. <laughs> so, Papa, you don't have any objection to us launching the startup? Why should I object? You will promote new technology. You will learn. You will contribute to the amelioration of the country's problems. Why would I object to such a good motive and effort? Quite right, Vineet. But come on now, the kachoris are ready. Tasha and Tini must be on their way here. Ah, ah, lovely aroma. <laughs> well, AI is useful. There is no doubt about it. Thank you, Papa. Papa, for your faith in us. Om. Uh, yes, Papa. Do you know why we repose our faith, belief, and trust on you, on Arun, on this generation? Why, Papa? Because, Because we, we are, your are your fathers. fathers. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome tomorrow. You were listening to the 40th episode of the science serial produced by All India Radio in collaboration with Vigyan Prasar. The title of the episode was Article of Faith. This episode was scripted by Dr. Anurag Sharma, translated by Dr. Sukanya Datta, concept and coordination Dr. Nakul Parashar and Dr. Birendra Kumar Tyagi. The episode was directed by Pankaj Pati Pathak. Assistance in production by Syed Munis Haider Rizvi and the participants were Dr. Jaydeep Singh, Swati Sinha, Nikhil Dewan, Mamta Malkani, Nitin Bhasin, Pragya Jha. Do stay tuned. Here are two questions for you. The lucky listener will get attractive prize from Vigyan Prasar. The first question is how AI can help the farmer by weather forecasting. And the second question is In which country and on which news channel the news was read by an AI based machine you can send in your answers by simple post to this address science serial welcome tomorrow vigyan prasar a50 institutional area sector 62 noida pin code 201309 you can also write to us on our email id radio@vigyanprasar.gov.in do write your full name and address along with the answers And yes if you send us any question which gets included in our program you will get a prize from Vigyan Prasar for that too so do not hesitate to write to us even if it is a simple query we will be back again with our next episode of the science serial welcome tomorrow same day same time next week till then goodbye this broadcast came to you from all india radio delhi